If you want to merge contigs in either a de novo assembly or a reference guided assembly with gap closure, you can easily do so in Seekman Pro to reduce the number of gaps in your assembly. For this particular example, we will use a reference guided assembly with gap closure of E. coli strain MC1061. After the bacterial genome is assembled in Seekman Engine, we will want to open the most processed file in Seekman Pro. To learn more about the various files generated by Reference Guided Bacterial Assembly with Gap Closure, please visit our Automated Bacterial Genome Closure video. Here, Seekman Engine will have already begun some initial de novo processing steps for you. The unlocated contigs generated from the assembly have been placed within the main assembly based on pair information. These contigs have been aligned end-to-end -end within their scaffolds. These automated steps help to fill in larger insertions and indels more completely. To continue merging contigs, it often helps to move contigs with low coverage out of the scaffold and into the unlocated contigs group. These lower coverage contigs can block end-to-end -end joining of larger contigs, so removing them can allow the remaining contigs to merge. These low coverage contigs can be identified in two different ways. One way is to compare the contig length to the number of reads within the contig. For example, here in contig 85, we only have 12 reads per 414 bases, qualifying as a low coverage contig. In addition, you can also view the statistics report by selecting Project, Statistics, and within this report, you can look at the average coverage score. So if we scroll down to Scaffold 1, and we again look at Contig 85, we can see that the average coverage score here is only 2.42. In this particular scaffold, there is a pretty clear differentiation of low coverage contigs, so I will move all contigs with an average coverage score of less than 6. You can then drag these contigs with low coverage into the unlocated contigs view. If we look at the scaffold view before we align the contigs, we can clearly see three small contigs with very low coverage between contig 11 and this large MC1061 contig. The light blue arrows represent paired reads in different contigs within the scaffold. I will remove these three contigs to the unlocated contigs group as demonstrated before with contig 85. I can then align my contigs by selecting contig, align contigs in scaffold end to end. After aligning contigs, we can see that we were able to merge contig 11 with this larger contig. If we look at the strategy view, we can see how moving those three low coverage contigs into the unlocated contigs group has allowed these two larger contigs to merge. You can see that the arrows have now turned green, indicating paired reads that are now joined in a single contig. You can then repeat these steps for other scaffolds to easily merge more contigs in your bacterial genome or other de novo assembly project. For more information on merging contigs, please visit our website at www.dnastar.com or contact us at support at dnastar.com.